As a reminder, this meeting is being recorded and I will send the recording out after we are finished. John, I was laughing at your, uh, duh. I, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Misty? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> that might be an indication. I don't know. <laughs> no, I understand. I, I misspell my own last name quite a bit. So. All right, let's go ahead and get started. And if you don't mind popping your name into the chat for attendance purposes, even if you don't, I can run a report after the fact. So, I mean, it, it's easier if you pop your name in, but I can also run a report after the fact. So if you can't. All right, so if you were with me last week or the week before, then you know that this is a hands-on webinar. And if possible, what I'd like for you to do is to open up a, uh, maybe minimize your Zoom window and then go ahead and open up a tab in Chrome where you can be working in your sandbox so that you can kind of do what I'm doing as I do it so that you can kind of mirror what we're doing. And that way, if you have any questions, you have an opportunity to ask. Uh, this will be about 30 minutes and then I will have time for I will have time for questions at the end. Today we are talking specifically about creating online assignments in Canvas. So specifically online assignments. Google Cloud assignments is next week. So today we're focusing specifically just on online assignments. That will include assignments that students type like text box assignments, assignments that they can submit a file or an upload assignments that they can do audio or media recordings and assignments that they could link from the web. 
So those are our four options, and we'll talk about that when we get into it. Um, reminder that this is being recorded, and um, I will send the recording out to everyone who is registered in Edgeforia once we are done today. Just once I have time to get it processed and uploaded to YouTube, I'll make sure to send it out so that way you can refer back to what we talked about um, on your own time. All right, with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I am sharing my screen right now. And I'm gonna go into my testing videos course, which is the one that I use as my sandbox. It's the one I use for all my videos that I've made for the basics course as well. Um, for you guys, that would be the equivalent of your sandbox. So if you're gonna follow along with me step-by-step, step, go ahead and open up your sandbox. If you're just gonna watch and take notes, that's where I am. All right, so I'm going to go down, this is my homepage, and it probably looks a little different than the last time you guys saw it because I have been making more videos. Um, and so I can't actually go from my homepage, but I'm gonna go over here to modules right now. And under this module, I've actually already started a demo online assignment. So I'm actually going to open this one up and show you, and then we'll go backwards from here. Okay. So in this one, some of you have been asking about how you could use PDFs that you already had created as an assignment. Don, I know that was one question that you had asked about. Um, so here's the caveat with Canvas. It does not have a built-in PDF editor. So what you would want is you would want your students to use a Chrome tool like Kami, K-A-M-I. And Kami is a free add-on. It may actually already be added on to all of our students um, from the web store. And that's something that if in the fall you find out it's not there, that's something you can put a tech request in for and have the technicians push that out because it's, it's a Google app that they could use. So what you could do here is that if you were creating an assignment and you wanted to use a PDF, so in this case, I have this story called The Sniper, K-A-M-I, Marley, Kami, K-A-M-I. Um, I have this story called The Sniper that I used to teach when I taught seventh grade English, but I only have it as a PDF. And so what I want my students to do is I want them to read this short story I want them to use Kami to annotate the document and making sure that they mark figurative language and then they would use that for the next assignment, which I haven't built yet, which I'm going to show you. So what your students would be able to do um, and, and then we would come in and we would edit this assignment because I haven't set anything else here. But because I had this PDF saved in my Google Drive, I chose not to embed it, which I know is the opposite of what I usually tell you to do but I actually just put it in as a link. So you can see, um, it's right underneath my little box there. But there's the link that I used, okay? And I should say and, I should say any. Um, and then I need to come down here and I'll set my points. And what I want is I want, instead of, an, of no submission, I want an online submission and in this Case, my students can do a website URL or a file upload. Okay. Misty? Yes. I don't know if you're going to go back and address this, but is there an advantage to why you put it in as a link only instead of embedding it? If in this case, Dawn, yes, because I want them to actually do the work in Cami and not in Canvas. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. So what they're going to do is they're going to click on the little arrow guy right there. And that's gonna open it up in their drive. And uh, so from here, I'm gonna select, like it's gonna give me the option of what I wanna open it with. And I would say select Cami. Okay. And that is gonna make it now so they can actually annotate directly on that PDF. So if you had a PDF with questions, they could type onto it or um, draw on it. In this case, because it's, it's an English assignment, I want them to highlight 
Does that make sense to everybody? And I'd already been playing around with it, so that's why it's already marked up, but they wouldn't see that. Okay. So there's the PDF and it, it's a just, you can tell it's just a scanned document, but because I have Cami installed, they can come in and they can highlight. And then if they, when they were ready to submit, they could either download it or they could hit, get a share link. Okay, and then they would copy that share link and when they came back to submit, they would paste that link in. And that would let you see their PDF annotation. Okay, so this is not one I normally do, but I know a lot of you have documents as PDFs. So I just wanted to touch on this very quickly so that you could see that you can use those PDFs, but you'll need to use a third party app like Kami. Does that make sense to everybody? Maybe. Okay. Got some yeses. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit now and let's just start from the beginning. Okay. On making an assignment. So I'm going to go right here to my module. I'm going to hit the plus button and I'm going to select assignment from the drop down the same way we always do this. And I'm going to make a new assignment. I'm going to call this one text box assignment. All right, I'm going to add the item and I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to click edit. So again, you guys, those steps, just memorize those steps because that's the same always, whether you're building a page, an assignment, a discussion or an announcement. All right. So let's say that I want my students to write. I know, do I have any history teachers with me? Your DBQs or something like that. Um, English teachers, maybe you want them to write a paragraph response. Science teachers, maybe you want them to do some kind of lab write up. So you could put your instructions here. And then what you're going to do is, and this would also be like, let's say I had a large amount of text from something and I wanted to copy and paste it. I could copy and paste instructions into this text box as well. Um, I could also attach a video. I could attach an article I wanted them to read. I could put in a PDF like I just showed you that I wanted them to read. But in this case, I'm going to have my instructions and it's going to be for them to write a brief paragraph summarizing the sniper, which is the story that I use. Let's pretend I spelled, I spelled that right, guys. There's nothing like being on a webinar and then not being able to spell. <laughs> okay, so for this particular assignment, I'm going to set the point value. I like to change it to percentage just so that it looks more like a traditional grade book, but you can leave it as points if you want to. Um, they're going to be an online submission. That's the focus of our thing today. And I'm gonna say text entry. That's the only option I'm taking for this one, okay? I'm gonna assign it to everybody. I'm not gonna worry about due dates right now, but I am gonna go ahead and say save and publish. All right, that's one kind of assignment. Very simple, write a brief, brief paragraph, text entry box. And I'll show you what these look like for students after we build a few more. All right, let's go back and build another assignment. And do the same thing, new assignment. This time I'm going to build a media upload assignment. Okay, uh, do I have any foreign language teachers with me today? Yes. Yeah, you're gonna love this, okay. So for this assignment, what you can do is you can, you'll build it just like normal. So you'll notice my steps are the same. I'm going to put my instructions in. So let's say record yourself um, introducing yourself to the following. And so let's say a friend 
Um, and then let's say a, um, I'm going to say a professional because I know in Spanish that would be two different types of greetings. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want them to record themselves doing these two different types of, of introducing themselves and you would be more specific there, but just to give you a rough idea, mm -hmm. 100 points, display is percent, online submission. You'll notice this is the same every time for me as well. This time I'm going to say media recordings. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's pause here and let's go look at this assignment. So I'm going to switch over to student view real quick. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Oops, did I not publish that? Sorry, guys. I'm also sorry if you can hear my dog whining against my, she's crying against my legs right now. <laughs> because nobody's paying attention to her. <laughs> okay, let me try that again. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, so there were the three assignments that I just made. This was the PDF assignment, this was the text box, assign text box assignment, and then this is the media assignment. So for the media assignment, students would click on submit assignment. And then right here, they would have the option to record or upload media. And when they clicked that, it would be that same thing that you guys can use to make um, your own recordings in Canvas. So I, you can see that it's going to let me do a webcam recording or I can turn my webcam off just out of frame, and do an audio only recording. So your students could actually record themselves speaking. Uh, do I have any music teachers with me today? They could record themselves singing scales. They could record themselves playing a certain tempo on their instruments. Very cool opportunity there for some um, out of the box assignments. Okay, so they would hit start recording and then that would let them record directly within Canvas um, the response to the assignment. And then when they were done, they would say submit assignment right there. So just to show you. This is my audio recording submission for this assignment. And they would say save and then they would submit assignment. You would then have that submission and it would show them, um, you would actually get to hear them speaking, which I think is very cool. Okay, mm -hmm. let's look at the other two assignments. So that was the media upload. The text box assignment for this one, when they go to submit assignment, it's gonna just give them a blank text editor and they just type answers into this box and then they hit submit. So that's what those look like for your students. And if you wonder about the confetti, the confetti is something that they get if they turn their assignments in on time. Just kind of a fun little like, yeah, you did a good job. Like us when we turn in our assignments. Yes, yes, when you turn your assignments in on time, you get confetti. It's a nice little just like, woo, I did a good thing. <laughs> and if they're late, they don't get confetti? If they're late, they don't get confetti. That's going to be a huge motivation. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Misty, is that an automatic thing, or is there some setting we have to go in and turn on for it that? It is automatic. Okay. I have it turned on at the account level. All right, thank you. Now, your kids can turn it off under their personal settings. Like, if they just hate the confetti, they can turn it off. But... I, I mean, if they really wanted to, they could. As could you. If you're like, I hate that confetti, you could turn it off. <laughs> I like it. I think it's fun. Uh-huh. It is. 
<laughs> All right, so here's the the one that I was I was showing you earlier, the PDF one. So where the students they would click there. No, I had a drama for you today. What? Maybe that wasn't to me. All right, so I've already done this and saved it, but what they would do here is they submit assignment and they would have an option between a file upload or a website URL, which there's my cami. And then they would say submit assignment, get their confetti. All right, I'm gonna leave student view and let's go look at these submissions. So you can see now that I have, I have these assignments to grade. Those came from my test student. That's where they just submitted, which by the way, for those of you who are, have moved on to the Canvas 102 course and you're wondering about how you can practice using SpeedGrader or Student View, using your test student is the way to do that, okay? Um, does anybody wanna see what the student submissions look like or do you want me to show you another type of online assignment? Um, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I got distracted a little bit, uh, with the Kami because I really like it. I didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I am not sure, but the, all the feature that the, the, on the bar said that the student can, uh, uh, listen instead of reading. There may be, I've only used it just as the annotation piece like the but if if there might be a select tool where they could highlight and it would read for them yeah yeah i like that and then uh, um so i'm thinking i can uh, uh on that assignment when i assign that from a pdf i can ask them to read this paragraph then can they record a video and turn just the voice of their Yes, when you set up the assignment, what you would do is you would set up that media recording option. Oh, okay, okay. And so that way they, they could open up the PDF and mm -hmm. be reading it as they were recording themselves in Canvas. Okay, I understand that. Thank you. They could also use any other like just regular like QuickTime or Loom or... Okay. Um, but I need to give the option, right? Yes. Whenever you create the assignment, you'll need to select that media um, recording option as a but way I to can, it. I can also um, give like the option if you want to turn your assignment in read, uh, writing or voiceover. Mm -hmm. or, okay. I think I, you should do all four. Like okay. anytime I could, I would do all four and let my kids pick the way they wanted to turn it in. You talk about giving them some ownership and choice, uh -huh. like where they can pick, oh, I'm good at writing, I'd rather write it. You know what, I'm not so good at writing, but I, can, I know I can say it. Okay. I'm gonna record myself. Like that's very powerful when you're talking about, and it's gonna keep them engaged. Yes, okay. Instead of it being the same type of assignment every single time. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hey Misty, uh, yes. just to make sure. When we create a great media assignment, can we also give the instruction to the students in recording our voice? Yes, you can. Okay, thank you. Yes, whenever you go into that, and I'll go back to my assignment. That should be more challenge for them in foreign language, yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank um, you. So whenever, let's see, what's the one we just made? This media upload one. If I wanted to, when I go to edit, instead of just typing my instructions in, And this is true of everything, guys. Um, I could go right here to the media icon and select upload and record media. And then I could do record and I could record myself giving the instructions. And then. So. Yeah, I even remember in the past, you create one when you talk and the computer yes. right down. <laughs> so there it is. And then you say finish and say. Yeah. And then there it would be for them to listen to the instructions. Yeah. Which I think is very powerful. Again, especially for um, my my foreign language teachers and my my music and band teachers, like those of you who really rely on being able to hear what your students are doing, 
this is a very powerful, and I got an error message. I think my internet is being glitchy today, but that's okay. You get the idea. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it was on the on your training for give students uh, feedback. Mm -hmm. You talk, and at the same time, I I, I remember uh, the computer write down what everything you said. Yeah. All right. So this one, I'm gonna do a uh, just another another one just to show you um, when I was talking about giving them all of the options, basically. So let's say that I did want them to, I don't know, whatever my instructions are. But again, I also have some people who like to like put in worksheets here, copy and paste worksheets. I could also put in a video. So remember that I do have my plugin over here. And if I wanted, I could put in a Quizlet or something from Khan Academy or something from YouTube. So let's say I go to Khan Academy and I'm gonna say science, AP chemistry, way over my head guys, but I'm just gonna pick one of these videos um, and embed it medium. It's gonna pop that video in. And so I'm gonna come back up and I'm gonna say, watch the video and then um, write or tell me three things you learned, two things you already knew, and one thing you hope to learn, okay? And so again, I can come down here now and I can make this a text entry where they could just type it, website URL if they wanted to use their Google Drive, media recording if they wanted to record themselves saying it or file upload if they wanted to use like word and then i save and they have all those different options for how they submit and and think about that that took me very very little time wouldn't you agree that was pretty fast mm -hmm. You know, um, granted, I mean, I'm not saying that this is an amazing assignment, but we do three, two, ones all the time. That's a great exit ticket. So I just built that as an exit ticket and I used the video that I didn't have to make. I searched for one, found one that I liked and needed, and it's popped in here. It won't have any ads. It won't have any ability to comment. Same if you do the YouTube ones, it won't have any uh, sidebar ads. It'll keep them right here within Canvas and then they can submit right down here below where they watch it. All right, we have six minutes, plus or minus a few, because I'll stay on to answer questions. But let's, let's, questions, who's got them? Misty, do you think the students will know how to submit the, their assignments? I'm just concerned that we need to teach them also. Um, I do have, I am working on, and I have a brief video that has a student introduction to Canvas um, that shows them how to submit. It doesn't show them how to submit every type of assignment, but I am working on a course that would be aimed at students and parents. Wow, great. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> if I'm out of task, please ignore me, but um, I always like to put a, a type of um, calendar for the parents in my, um, in my website. Mm -hmm. So can I put all the assignments that are here? I don't want to make too many steps like I did last, last year with Google Classroom. Can I put a link or like, like the calendar, a daily calendar with all the assignments uh, from Canvas directly to my website? I don't know if I'm explaining this clearly. You can export your calendar. I don't know how many places it's compatible. Okay. But I do know you can export your calendar. Okay. Um, and you would want to do the one just for that course or your, the courses that you have. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah uh -huh. um, obviously, it's going to be your calendar for all of your courses. Uh huh. Uh huh. But I know there's a way that you can export it. It is not something I've done, but. I know, I know there is a way. Okay. okay. Um, 
So there's that link right there. So it does say that you can you can put it into an iCal feed, the Google Calendar, iCal, and Outlook. Oh, okay, so okay, okay. Click on what it is, you can uh -huh. take that link and put it in. So that was under calendar feed. Okay. Thank you. you try that, yes. Uh, Francisco, yes, I agree. There are, there are teachers on every, there will be teachers at Strike, there will be teachers at Walker, and there are teachers at the high school who all used Canvas in the past. Every campus has somebody that has used it to a certain degree. So there are absolutely people that you can reach out to um, at your campus that can help you. Yes. Absolutely. All right, guys, any other questions? Um, let's see. I'll just show you real quick what this looks like, the submitted assignment. So it, it submitted the link. You can click the link and then it loads it here in the Canvas tab. I'm sorry, my internet is going very slow. But there's the article, there's their, and you can see their annotations transferred over, and then you can grade and give them feedback right here in Canvas. So that's just to show you what the submission would look like for if you chose to use Cami, and all the students submitted was that link. So I think that's pretty cool for those of you that already have PDFs made and don't want to have to remake them if you, if you did want to use them as an assignment. I wanted to make sure that I touched on that a little bit. Elizabeth, thank you for being here. I, again, I will send the recording out. I appreciate your time. And then here's the media one, if you guys would like to see that. Misty, can they draw in Cami? Yes, there's a pencil tool. Mm -hmm. Now, um, only in the free version, there are some limitations. Like, I don't know if they can do shapes and things like that, but I know there is a pencil tool. So they could do like basic this drawings. This is my audio recording. Sorry. But there's, again, that's what it would look like if they submitted audio, just so you guys can see that. So yes, yeah, so there is, some, there is some basic information. I mean, some basic tools in Cami. The main thing would be there's ability to add text boxes highlight and then there is the draw tool thank you like a pencil tool yes. yeah i encourage you guys to go add cami to your own drive and and uh to your own chrome and play around with it some it's a good it's a very good annotator a pdf tool okay so since you mentioned that i am trying to do it as well and i'm trying to put it in canvas as an app and it's asking me for the code and i i found my uh I don't have I found it my consumer a, key, but I can't find the shared secret. I don't have it as an app, Don. Oh, in, it, you don't have it as an app in Canvas? No. You just had to put it on our Chrome as an extension. I just had it in my, yeah, it's just added to my personal, like my Chrome account. So you would want your students to add it. Oh, okay. I they can look into it. I don't know. That may be something though that only comes with the paid version. Sometimes apps like that, you have to have the paid version to get that consumer key or that shared oh, secret. Okay. Yes. But I don't need it in my Cami. I mean, I don't need it in my Canvas you to don't do have what you to have did. It. No, to do what I did, that was just the free version just from the Chrome extension. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Yep. That's a good question. Because, uh, yeah, some things that we have apps added, like Flipgrid, you don't have to pay for but Nearpod only works with the paid version. Like there's different levels to different things. Yeah. yeah. Which is a bummer. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, guys, anything else? Nope, thank you. Okay, well, thank you guys for being here today. I appreciate it. Um, you guys are doing amazing things. I've been grading your basics courses. I'm pretty much caught up and I've also moved on to grading the beyond basics course for those of you who have finished level one and were wanted level two. Remember that level two is optional, but there are even more tools that are discussed in that. And I'm working on a level three that has even more things that you can use. Um, 
So again, if you're, if you're wanting to learn more about Canvas and what all it can do, just keep an eye out for those other courses. And uh, if you're interested in getting enrolled in them, let me know and I'll, I'll make sure that you, you get enrolled. So, all right, thank you guys so much for your time. And again, giving up time during your summer and uh, please feel free to reach out if there's anything at all that you need and I'll do my best to help you out and answer it. Thank you. Thank you guys. Have a Thank good day. You. Thanks. Bye. Bye.